Hello, everybody. Baron here. This week, we are doing things a little bit differently. We've split this video into two parts because we've had a guest on. So one will be an interview with the guest, just an interview about them, how they're a storyteller, what they bring to their storytelling. The other part will be our usual format of that reminds me of getting into a film. This week, Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness featuring our special guest, Mike Barry. You've come to the interview with Mike Barry specifically about his work. If you want to hear the full episode about the film, head over to the other video on our channel. Hi, welcome to That Reminds Me Of, a podcast about film and the films that remind us of that film. You're here with Baron and the Doc. And the Maestro. Do we need another drink? Yes, we do. Yeah. Baron. So good to see you. (laughs) We've got a guest. (laughs) We've got a guest. Holy... Skeleto, Batman. That is right. And the guest is Mike Barry, who has got a new book out that he's illustrated. He's in Melbourne launching this new book. We thought this is the perfect opportunity to have him on the show. So we've we've invited him to come over. He was stoked to be here, which is great. He didn't say no. And um, he's going to be on the show with us tonight. Mike, how are you, man? Guys, good. Very happy to be here. Awesome. I've awesome. been a long-time listener, long-time wonderer of which one was Doc and which one was Baron because uh, <laughs> I don't watch the YouTube. I listen ah, uh, you know, on my commute or whatever. So yep. I hear the chinking of the ice cubes and, the you know, yep. um, yeah, all the little little tells of this, this show I love very much. Uh, so good. I must say, uh, Baron, so I took... I took Mike out to try and get him smashed before the episode. <laughs> Didn't work. And he did say, hey, Baron, how are you, mate? <laughs> so I think he now has established. No, wait, I went, Baron, wait, Doc. No, the Baron? No, wait, the Doc? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh. yeah, there was a bit of, a bit of confusion. But awesome. We, I love we it. We established it was who was who. <laughs> So I don't, I don't think the audience actually differentiates. Yeah. But yeah. no, no. And and actually some people have said that we sound exactly the same, which I can't understand, but we yeah. sound nothing like each other well, in my mind. There you go. Mm. There you go. So we met in through, I don't know, corporate stuff, mm. like the same way that Doc and I met mm-hmm. um some years back. And we've kept in touch. And I think probably one of the coolest things about well, aside from the fact that you're an awesome dude, is just hearing about these your your journey with the graphic novels that you've been working on. Can you tell us a little bit about that. Like, how did you get started? Why did you get started? Where, and and you started off as in the ad, like ad agency world, right? And mm. then you decided to move to this sort of work. Yes. Well, I uh, yeah, I did probably 15 years in ad agencies. Um, you know, in creative teams, running creative teams. Um, started as a designer. Uh, then sort of moved more into the writing and then sort of merged them both, I guess. And, um, you know, that's actually the skill set you need to create a graphic novel. Yeah. Mm. Um, so I've always loved comics and loved telling stories, but when I had my, uh, my two boys and, you know, I had to read them like six or seven stories every night just to get them to go to sleep, um, which is actually a real joy. I don't want to sound like I didn't like it, but, you know, You'd start to read these books over and over again and you're like, okay, I love this one mm. and I hope I never see this one again. You know, <laughs> So you'd start to get a sense of what works for them, what works for you. And then we got to this point where um, they reached a certain age and they came out to the living room and they started to look at my graphic novel shelf, you know, which aka The Shrine, right? Awesome. <laughs> so yeah. All my favourite graphic novels from all the masters, you know. Um, yeah, and, you know. The kids are like, can we read that one? And I was like, no way. (laughs) (laughs) How about that one? I was like, no, you can't read that one either. And actually, you know, I'm starting to feel like, why am I reading these if you can't read them? You know, um, but I think what I realised was there, you know, all these amazing masterpieces that I've collected and studied and just read over and over again. Um, And, I, you know, I've done that because I've tried to absorb how they're telling stories and how they're, you know, using the medium of comics to like for all it's worth. Yeah. Know? And then I was like, wow, there's nothing on here that is suitable for my kids, you know, and there's a lot of books here. Um, and I guess I had this, you know, I'd never thought about making kids books before, but having read so many and, you know, you just get into that mindset, you know. Um, so my plan was to take 
all the things I'd learned from the greatest comics ever made and apply those to um, a book that was perfectly suitable for kids, but it wasn't like dumbing down the medium. It wasn't dumbing down the storytelling, any of it. It was just like, you know, if I was a kid, what would I want? Mm. And also if I was a grown up, which I am, <laughs> what I want to read if yeah. I'm reading it to my kid, like, you know, the sort of the Pixar approach. Yeah, like, totally. Where it's for the kids, but it's also for the adults and, you know, Anyway, that's kind of that was the philosophy, and then um, yeah, I miraculously managed to earn three months long service leave after a long stint in advertising. Hot diggity! And um, <laughs> I was kind of in a crouch start at that point, and I was like, I told my wife, okay, I don't know if you're planning on me like mowing the lawn for three months or whatever, but I'm going to be in the study drawing a comic, and uh, I gave myself three months to draw it. Um. I just thought I was at the age where I just had to do it. You know, I'd mm. thought about it for so long. Um, I finally had a reason to do it for the kids and for myself. And so uh, yeah, launched into it, managed to get it drawn in three months but not coloured. So then I convinced my my work to let me go to three days a week while I was colouring my masterpiece. And, you know, uh, anyway. You crowd, made it happen. Yes, crowdfunded mm. it, got it out there, yeah. and, you know, then I made a second book and, you know, on to other books and so very exciting stuff. So we got the first book here, Action Tank. Oh, yes. One. There it is. Dog-eared. It's been read. I love life. that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> love the um, thumbprint. Isn't, isn't that a ripper book, honestly? It's great. And and what you're saying about the Pixar approach, totally, it, it, it's in there. Like, you know, there's plenty of quirky humor mm. throughout the whole thing to keep adults and children totally entertained. Um, also, I love the way you wrote uh, a little thing in each of them for for my daughter. These are both Savannah's copies. It's very nice. Um, and in the second one, which you crowdfunded, yep. you crowdfunded the first one too, yep, right? Yep. I think we just got in on the second one. In, That's in, right, yes. In, in, in time. Um, you've got this like little star map type mm -hmm. thing on the back. Mm. Savannah's name's in here somewhere. Yeah. We found it at one point. It's fun trying to find it. Yeah, it? totally. You can see there's that one guy is. that gave me, um, he pledged $500, so I put his whole family in a meteor shower. <laughs> the Richards family. <laughs> I tell the Richards. <laughs> Love yeah. it. His entire, he sent me his family tree on Ancestry.com. Oh, goes, that's no. great. That's great. Yeah. I love it. Five but, generation meteor storm. <laughs> that's it. But, the, but these books are, are full of so many interesting creative decisions. Yeah, like you you read them and you and you just think, yeah, that's a that's a good choice. Rather than going that way, he's gone that way. Totally. Uh, and I really respected that. And and I think you said it was um made also for grown ups. I, I consider myself sometimes to be a grown up. Sometimes. And <laughs> and I I got a lot out of it myself. So yeah, that makes me very happy. I love. Yeah, to hear that's that. what I was trying to achieve. Yeah, yeah. That's great. And are there more action tanks coming? I there is a third mm. one that I've almost completed writing and thumbnailing. Um, but now the real task of drawing it begins. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Yeah. If you think I look old now, wait till I finish that. <laughs> <laughs> no, How satisfying to be doing it end to end yourself for yourself. Yeah. yeah well, as you a know, recovering it's... control freak, it is um, <laughs> a serious relapse. <laughs> it's like... I control every aspect yeah, of it yeah. and, you know, um, yeah, and really no one can read it until it's finished because it doesn't make sense until then, so it's all too late by then. Yeah. You know, hopefully mm. it's good. Great. <laughs> that sounds awesome to me. Um, as someone who is going through just endless rewrites on, on a script, mm -hmm. um, just being able to do exactly what you want from the start to the end yep. mm. and by the time it's out there it's too late is great. That sounds amazing. Now, wait, now, so the rewrites, are, is that being directed by someone else? Like, you know, why are you rewriting? Oh, it's just the, it just seems to be the path of the, uh, the script, the feature script. Mm -hmm. um, it's all about, it's all about everybody in the core team being happy and then what you need it to be like for it to get funded. Yep. Um, you're very beholden to the funding process. Yes. Okay. So, um, yeah. It's it's its own little thing. I've never really wrapped my head around it. Mm. You know, it's it's one of those um, processes that I find so difficult. Yep. Uh, and the, the bit that's fun is when it's the script is at that point where you can go and shoot it. Yeah, of course. That's when it becomes really fun for yeah. me, anyway. Yeah. Because um, I guess I'm not a true writer. Right. Um, I'm more of a director uh -huh. who who does who who writes. A storyteller. So, 
Yeah, mm. there you go. <laughs> yeah. I think. Well, Bar- look, uh, mm. yeah. Oh, sorry, go, Kim. Well, I think Baron's being hard on himself because he is he he is a writer, but I, I've I sense though that the um the script revision process has actually been a fun and enjoy enjoyable ride in itself anyway. At times, yeah. yeah. It has, yeah, at times. Well, it's a collaborative it's just, one, isn't it? Because yeah. you're getting input and then you've got to make it work and like. Right. So, yeah. I mean, that's the thing. I like advertising is not a um, one-person thing. It's like you're in a team all the time, you know, mm. clients, support staff, like other creatives, whatever, all of them. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I know how to collaborate. I think for me, this was a real joy to actually just go, you know what? I'm just going to like hone right in and it's all on me, right? Yeah. So, but, yeah. Um, you know, I'm still interested in creating books and stories in a collaborative way too because I think you get stuff that you never would have created on your own, you know? Absolutely. Like this. I mean, I, mm. I actually was talking to Doc on the way over here. I was like, I, you know, I don't know if either of you two would have just done something like this Um this show on your own, but it need, you need to be together, no. and and suddenly it's a different thing. Isn't it, it needs like, the chemistry. It's this particular chemistry, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's this very right. special chemistry. Yeah, and you know, behind the scenes staff as well, obviously. Absolutely, staff. Oh, <laughs> whoa, uh, Sal, would you consider yourself as staff, or would you consider yourself as part of the team? <laughs> Like yeah. <laughs> speaking, he, speaking of Sal, we we do employee if he's not paid though. Mm. No, he's, he's a, <laughs> ser, a servant. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Speaking of the maestro, we will, as always, uh, have our our segment the mo- a moment with maestro. A moment with a moment. the maestro. With maestro. Excellent. Well, I think, uh, Mike, you said a, an interesting word before and that was storyteller. Mm-hmm. I'm sure you threw that in somewhere. <laughs> and with our guests, we have tried so far with our limited number of guests mm-hmm. to attract the storytellers. And I think we have. Yeah, we had a Questy who, who, whose stories are in comedy. Yep. We had our very own, The Maestro. Yes. Um, who creates stories. Storyteller from way back. Through way back, way back through editing and and Mm. putting things in the right place. And now we've got our graphic novelist storyteller. Yeah. It's a good track record, guys. That's what we're trying to go for here. Yeah. And to find the right person for the films that we're we're, we're reviewing, which is not always going to work out, but I think, you know, We've, yeah, yeah. So far, we've done well. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's a good segue to starting to talk about the film. But I think another thing we have mentioned was the collaboration, and it'd be remiss of us not to mention Mike's latest oh, stuff that he's on a book tour about it. Like it's a big thing. Oh yeah, yeah that's why I'm town. in Melbourne. Actually, that's the only reason he's on the bloody show. <laughs> well, no, I came to Melbourne this to book. do this discussion, but then there also is a book tour. Yeah, yeah. cool. Yeah, good, that's right. Good Get your, the priorities are right. Um, <laughs> can you see that cell right there? Yeah. See the yeah. magic. We run tomorrow. Uh, so this is interesting because unlike Action Tank, you are the illustrator of this, the artist by you, but someone it's been written by somebody else. Mm-hmm. What's that like? Yeah, well, um, so it's been written by Nat Amor, who is uh, a very creative woman from um, Sydney's Northern Beaches, like five minutes from where I live, right? So, But we met here in Melbourne on a uh, children's book council sort of mentorship fellowship thing four years ago. Um, there were five of us and, you know, I met Nat straight away and we were like, we hit it off creatively and personally and, you know, uh, and I think the way she tells it, she, you know, she was about to get her first book contract signed then. Um, but getting to know me and us bouncing off our, you know, me telling her all about how much I love graphic novels. I was there for my graphic novels. She was there for, you know, her novels and her picture books and all sorts of stuff, but it sort of stimulated her thoughts about, and her passion for comics again that she'd had when she was a kid. So this book <clears throat> is actually about, um, it's a novel, but it has um, graphic novel sections appearing throughout it, mm. right? Um, and it's about four, awesome. be- yeah, four best friends that are obsessed with a comic book series called The Screensavers. Um, and so I created The Screensavers sections. So um, that was done, yeah, in collaboration with Nat. So sometimes she'd give me a, like a script, like a film script. Other times she would just give me like kind of the intent of the scene um, because, that, I mean, that's the interesting thing. The, the comic book sections don't really live on their own. They live inside the bigger story. So it's like these stories within the story. And, um, yeah, it, I mean, to be honest, like Nat's a genius. She's a dead set genius, right? So I wouldn't necessarily be that confident to just <laughs> illustrate some 
random writers stuff, but mm. um, already knowing her and knowing how, yeah, how talented she is. And also she made a huge effort to make it um, clear that I kind of, I kind of own this book with her. It's not, it's not her book with a bit of help from me. It's like yeah. our book, you know? Yeah. Um, That's so cool. all of those reasons, you know, I'm really stoked with the result and um, yeah, with the collaboration. It's great. Your style runs through. You can, you, but if, Obvious, if you look, isn't it? yeah, if you look at the two, you, there's a real sense of um, like what your style is. Well, if you're talking about an angle like that on the cover, I've realised that I've done that twice. Now. <laughs> so, but yeah. there's maybe more to it. But yeah, uh, maybe my next yeah. book cover won't have an angle on it. The like way, <laughs> the way you do the figures, the way you colour, like yeah. it's it's um, just the, the way your the way your lines are drawn. Like it, there's definitely. There's a, there's a style there that's coming through, which yeah. is cool. I mean, are you aware of your own style or is that just something, is that something you've developed or is that just, I don't know, once you start drawing, it just comes out on its own, you know? Yeah, I think my style's evolving quite rapidly now, actually. Um, so I can probably see things where, I mean, if I look at the first Action Tank book and then I look at the second one, yeah, it's actually a little hard to go back and look at the first one. You yeah, know? Um, yeah. I think initially I was just trying to make it look professional. I was trying to make it look like it could sit on the shelf next to a Batman comic or a Tintin comic or, mm. you know. Um, and so I just wanted it to look like it was, um, yeah, that level. Uh, I think once I started to actually, you know, build a longer form story like that, I realised the impact that colour has, mm. you know, um, from a storytelling point of view, but also just a, it can tie things together, it can change the mood. Um and yeah, it can sort of create a whole world. Even just, so, I think a black and white comic that's coloured one way or another can actually change entirely the tone. You know, just like a movie, right? Yeah. The way the yeah, you know, the way a movie is made. So, um, yeah, I'm definitely aware of my style, but I'm also aware that I want it to keep evolving. Mm. Um, and so, uh, I probably in We Run Tomorrow, the new one. Um, if you look closely, you will realize there, yeah, actually it, it is a little like freer, I think. I'm trying to go for a bit freer, a bit more gestural, you know. Isn't it cool though but, just to hear like just the, the, the reflections on color? That's one little lever you can, you can yeah. pull um, and it just talks to storytelling in general and how many different levers there are hmm. like, and, you know, co color is such a – you know, just one little one. Um, there's make in in film, absolutely makeup, editing, de uh, design, words, mm. yeah, etc. You know, uh, just just on that, I guess uh, I'd made some comics before Action Tank, which mm. were like more little web comics or whatever. And to be honest, it was more color in that case was kind of coloring in, right? Like, oh, blue mm. jeans, like green shirt, skin color, brown hair. But I, I think somehow before I started this, I realized I can use it differently to that, you know. Mm. And so um, it doesn't have to be so literal. I mean, that's the whole point. Mm. If we need life, we just look outside the window, right? But this is like the feeling of life or like what are you trying to get across? It's not I don't need to replicate existence. I need to replicate the feeling of existence. You know? mm. So like mm. how can you use color? And it's amazing actually once, once that switch went off, it was kind of addictive, you know, like looking That's and cool. exploring colour like that. Yeah. So this is the first time we've released a separate episode, which is an interview with one of our guests, this time Mike Barry, where we talked about his new book and his process of going through illustrating and writing his books. Uh, if you want to hear the full episode where we talk about Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness, Head over to the, our other links on YouTube or on Spotify or wherever you're getting this and uh, you'll find the full episode there. It's much longer. We go right into the film together and Mike adds a whole bunch of great insight into comics, into superheroes, the Marvel Cinematic Universe and the film itself. Head on over.